Namah ho 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 Vishnu padaya Krishna pristaya bhutale Shri Makte Bhakti Vedanta Swami Naiti Namine Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prabhupada Hey, Namaste, hey, 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 Sarasat Seed, hey, 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 Sri <laughs>
Yes. Nine. Three. Oh. Mm-hmm. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Yes, now. Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Ram Ram Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Hare Ram Hare 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 Bolo Hare Ram Hare Ram Jose Jose Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Hare Ram Hare 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 Hey, it's not Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Hare Ram Hare Ram Hare 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 Krishna 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 Hare Hare Ram Goranga Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Hare Ram Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Krishna Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare. Hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Goranga Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Hari Ba, 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 H
Hare 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 Premanande, she got out her pundit jiki. I see a bravo party. Hare Krishna, Mahamantra ki. Okay, everyone, I don't know if you could, you ready? We're going to chant, we're going to chant the mantra without seeing it. <laughs> okay. Bada, Bada. Sanka, Sanka, Gadadhar Panda, Goshani, Bada Saka Ganda Pada Panda Goshani. Barasaka Gadadar Pandit Goshani. Ten Ho. Lakshmi Rupa. Ten Ra. Sama. Keha. Nai. Ten Ho Lakshmi Rupa Tana. Sama Keha Nai. Tena laksa rupa tanra sama keha nai. Got it, you got it, you got it. Okay. Bada saka gada dara pandita kosani. Tena lakshmi rupa tanra sama keha nai. Bara Saka Gada Dara Pandita Goshani Tena Lakshma Rupa Tanra Sama Kehanai Pandajis, all of you. Okay, great. <laughs> Translation. Gadadhar Pandit, the fourth branch is described as an incarnation of the pleasure potency of Sri Krishna. No one, therefore, can equal him. Please repeat, Gadadhar Pandit. The fourth branch is described as an incarnation of the pleasure potency of Sri Krishna. No one, therefore, can equal him. Srila Prabhupada's purport. In the Gora Gonadesh Deepika, Verses 147 through 153, it is stated, The pleasure potency of Sri Krishna, formerly known as Vrindavaneshwari, is now personified in the form of Sri Gadadhar Pandit in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Rupa, I'm sorry, Sri Sarupa Dhammadar Goswami has pointed out that in the shape of Lakshmi, the pleasure potency of Krishna, she was formerly very dear to the Lord as Shamasundar Vallabha. The same Shamasundar Vallabha was present in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes as Gadadhar Pandit. Formerly as Lalita Saki, she was always devoted to Srimati Radharani. Thus Gadadhar Pandit is simultaneously an incarnation of Srimati Radharani and Lalita Saki. In the 12th chapter of this part of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there is a description of the descendants of the cyclic succession of Gadadhar Pandit. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda 
Jaya Dvaita Chandra Gaya Gora Bhakta Rindham Pancha Tattva Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam So these five personalities, the Lord, the Incarnation, the Devotee, the Manifestation, the Pure Devotee and the and the pleasure energy of the Lord has reappeared as five. The absolute truth now, although one in person manifests themselves in five forms of themselves for different pastimes. One of the pers personalities is the Shakti energy of the Lord known as Gadadhar Pandit. Although in the male body, he is she, she is the female, the counterpart of Lord Sri Krishna known as Srimati Radharani. Radharani ki jai. Maharani ki jai. Barsanavali ki jai. Got it, okay. And along with the Anuradha, the little Radha, and that is Lalita Shaki, has placed these two personalities in one form known as Sri Gadadhar Pandit. Gadadhar Pandit appeared one and a half months after Lord Chaitanya's appearance, just as we are now celebrating his appearance day, practically in the middle of May. And we saw Lord Chaitanya's appearance was in the end of March. So many times the pastimes of the different personalities they appear in different years, but this time they both appeared in the same year. So Gadadhar Pan is only one and a half months younger than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he appeared just to assist the Lord in his pleasure pastimes because he is actually Radharani himself. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Anoyanya. It's inconceivable how it is possible that the Lord manifests himself as two forms of Radharani in the same pastime. But this is the nature of spirit. Spirit is not limited to anything material. If we see spirit or try to understand it in a material sense, we become confused and, and actually incorrect. Spirit is never limited. So Lord Chaitanya is Krishna with the mood of Radharani and Gadadhar Pandit is Radharani, but in a different mood than she normally presents herself. Because Radharani in the spiritual world is a left-wing gopi, and left-wing gopis and right-wing gopis are two, two categories of gopis. One are very obedient to Krishna, and one sometimes disagree with Krishna, and sometimes argue with Krishna, and sometimes do things that Krishna doesn't expect them to do, <laughs> like steal his flute. <laughs> But that's, that's the left-wing gopis, and Radharani is the chief of the left-wing gopis. But now she's appearing in a different mood, very passive, submissive, peaceful, super respectful to all personalities, in a very calm and gentle, sweet form. So when you look at the altar, you see Gadadhar, you should know his mood is very, very sweet, humble, gentle, Without any preconceived feelings of anything, he lives his life in devotion. He's so unique. But that's Radharani's mood in this particular pastime. So when Lord Chaitanya was a scholar, when he first appeared, because his different leelas are divided into three categories. His Adi Leela, Madhya Leela, and ultimately Antya Leela. But in his Adi Leela, he was a scholar an arrogant scholar, expert in Nayak, expert at defeating people in any forms of argument. In fact, he was so expert, but he was also, they call him arrogant, <laughs> that means proud. So he exhibited this mood of pride along with his scholarship. So he would defeat people quite easily because he's God. <laughs> but, but this defeating was something that he did regularly. No one would argue with him. Although he was only a professor of grammar and various types of logics, not study of logic, still he knew the scriptures back and forth. So one time he said to Gadadhar Pandit, because sometimes the devotees would meet him, they didn't know who he was. 
playing the role of a scholar, he never revealed himself of who he was until later on. And so they would come up to him and they would talk to him about Krishna consciousness. And sometimes he would say, you know, if you just keep blessing me with your presence, someday I'll become a devotee. <laughs> This is what Lord Chaitanya would say that. But then when he would argue with them, he would defeat them. <laughs> they couldn't defeat him. So one time he said to Gadadhar, Gadadhar, tell me the meaning of liberation. And Gadadhar Pandit said, well, liberation means to be free from all material activities. And Lord Chaitanya said, wrong. <laughs> Go home and read your books and come back tomorrow and I'll ask you again. <laughs> and then, before that happened, he destroyed his argument from all angles of vision and reestablished a whole new definition of liberation, which was completely in line with the idea of liberation, but completely different than anybody had ever heard before. And then after he established that, he would say, okay, now I have established the meaning of liberation. Please defeat that. So they couldn't defeat it. So he would defeat his own argument and then reestablish the original argument. <laughs> and that's why he, he was so expert. Jiva Goswami was also like that. He could, angle, he could argue from any angle. It doesn't matter what point he took and he would defeat whoever he would argue with. That's what is called expert at debate and expert at uh, understanding the different sciences. So Lord Chaitanya was like that, and so the devotees would get frustrated. <laughs> so he went, so after some time he went to Gaya, met his spiritual master Ishwar Puri, changed, got initiated, became Vishwambar, came back. Now he's different, he's gentle, he's humble, he wants kirtan, he's sweet, he's crying in ecstasy. He's in the mood of Krishna's pure devotees showing love for Krishna. Jai Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai, you're going already? Don't go yet? No? Oh no. Please come back. <laughs> How come they're closing the curtain so early? Offering. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, the Lord has to eat. Okay. <laughs> His name is Vishwambar. Vishwambar means one who can eat the whole universe. So you don't have enough food here. It's just it's not, it's not possible. In all of Slovenia, you don't have enough. <laughs> you have to export it from all, all around the world. <laughs> so that's Vishwambar. So he was initiated. He got the name Vishwambar. And then he came back and he was so different, humble, gentle. So the, and now all, everyone said, oh, Nimai Pandit has become a devotee. And then gradually they, all, they started to associate with him. And then he started to build his entourage of devotees. But then because of it, he was touched so deeply by his spiritual master. And now he was exhibiting the, the love of a pure devotee. Uh, his heart was always like in ecstasy. So when his ecstasy of love for Krishna, his mother, Sachi Mata, was thinking, what's happened to my son? He's going crazy. <laughs> Did ever, they ever accuse you of that? You know, you're a Hare Krishna, now you're completely, you know, gone. <laughs> There's no hope for you. <laughs> you become bad. You wear these, you know, these bed sheets, you know, instead of good looking pants. <laughs> and you have this ponytail. In the back there, what do, we don't know what that is, but anyway. The ladies never get criticized because they always look good, but the men, they look funny. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, because we're coming from another realm of existence, so, you know, <laughs> everybody else, we look strange. Are they from Mars? No. Jupiter? Mm, let's see, maybe what planet? Maybe the lower planets. <laughs> So, you know, we get, we get criticized. So Lord Chaitanya was just like going crazy in ecstasy. So his mother thought, I got to bring him to the doctors because he needs some help. He needs some, you know. So the doctors would say, hmm, he has this wind disease. Wind disease. And 
Therefore, he cannot control himself. So you just, you just massage him with herbal oils. In fact, you bathe him with herbal oils. And that didn't work. <laughs> she took him another, to another Kaviraj. He said, put some Shiva ghee on his head and rub it in. That didn't work. <laughs> so he was exhibiting the, the, the mood of epilepsy. You know what epilepsy is, right? It's like a wind disorder and you just, people just freak out, you know. But, you know, for devotees, they have that wind disease every once in a while. <laughs> but it's not... <laughs> it happens during, you know, the most unusual times. <laughs> Sometimes it's called kirtan. <laughs> so, yeah, so... Sachi Mata didn't know what to do. So one day... Um, he was with Gadadhar Pandit. Sati Mata was there, so he was exhibiting his love for Krishna. And then Gadadhar Pandit said, My Lord, well, I don't know if he called him my Lord, but he said, Vishwambar, Krishna's in your heart. Krishna's in your heart. And, oh, that's all he had to hear. He took his fingers and went, he was trying to rip open his heart, just like Hanuman tried to open his heart to see Sita and Ram. And... Uh, Gadadhar said, oh, no, what did I say? He grabbed his hands and he was holding him. And, you know, Lord Chaitanya is not so easy to hold. You know, he's like strong. But Gadadhar was really holding on. Finally, he resisted. And then Gadadhar Pandit said, be calm. Krishna's coming. Be calm. He's coming. He's coming. And Lord Ji, uh, pacified. Satyamanda said, oh, Gadadhar, you did it. No one else could do it. Please stay with my son always. <laughs> so she didn't want Gadadhar to leave. And they were inseparable. They were completely inseparable. And the two were always together. But then Lord Chaitanya decided to take sannyas. That's a whole story. And he went to Jagannath Puri. And he started to live there. Gadadhar Pandit decided to follow him. So he did. <laughs> And he also took a kind of sannyas, which is a little different. It's called Shetra sannyas. Shetra means holy place. So that means a person decides to stay in a holy place their whole life and worship the deity in that particular place. So who in our movement, this is an easy question, is exhibiting Shetra Sannyas, has been doing it for their whole their whole life. Huh? Jani Vas Prabhu and Pankajangri, both of them, they stay, they were told by Prabhupada, stay and worship Radha Madhava your whole life. And they did. They became glorious for for their devotion. So this Shetra Sannyas now, Lord Chaitanya wanted to benedict Gadadhar Pandit, so he gave him one particular deity whose name was Gopinath. Now, Gopinath was a big deity. If you've been to Jagannath Puri, there's one temple called the Tota Gopinath Temple. Tota means garden, and around the temple is a beautiful garden with many, many flowers and shrubberies and a nice place for gathering. We were there, we had pandal programs, we had talks, we had Krishna conscious prashadam programs. <laughs> so, uh, Gadadhar Pandit actually started to worship Gopinath. I forgot one pastime I wanted to tell. I'll tell it later. But anyway, it's a little bit before this particular pastime. Should I go back to that one or should I continue with this one? Hmm? Continue with this one? Or go back to the other one? Continue, okay. So, now Gadadhar Pandit is worshipping the deity. Now Lord Chaitanya, he wants to travel, he wants to go to Vrindavan. But he also wants to secretly go and meet Sanatana Rupa Goswami who is staying in Ramakali, which is on the way to Vrindavan. So he decides to go. Now when Gadadhar Pandit finds that Lord Chaitanya is going to leave, he's thinking, how is he going to leave? Uh, you know, I, I I can't bear his separation. So he says to the Lord, you know, uh, I'm going with you. Lord Chaitanya says, you can't go with me. You have taken the vow to stay with Gopinath and worship Gopinath. 
He said, you're not different than Gopinath, so if I'm going with you, I'm still worshipping Gopinath. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya didn't like that. So they went back and forth. Finally, Gadadhar Pandit said, well, I'm going to actually, I'm, I'm, I'm coming, but I'm not going to you. I'm going to go see your mother, Sachi Mata and Navadweep. <laughs> And so Lord Chaitanya was walking and he was going and then Gadadhar Pandit was following behind. And also there was Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was there. So finally Lord Chaitanya, he got to the river and there was a boat. And there was a boat waiting for him. So he got in the boat, he looked at Gadadhar Pandit and he said, he didn't say anything. <laughs> he looked at Gadadhar Pandit, turned and signaled to the boatman to leave and Gadadhar Pandit just fainted. He lost consciousness. He couldn't bear the separation. This is the mood of Vrindavan. The mood of Vrindavan is the love is so strong. When you love someone so strong, you can't bear that separation. And when they are, when you are separated from them, you're always thinking about them. And when you're always thinking about them, that love becomes stronger and stronger. And that's why separation is there in loving moods, just to increase the love just to increase the love. And that, is, and that is how love works. If you're always together, sometimes you know, you take advantage or you don't really appreciate as much as when that separation comes. So the highest mood is vipralamba bhav, love and separation. But before you can have separation, you have to have meeting. Because without meeting, separation doesn't mean anything. You can't be separated from someone you don't know. <laughs> So that love has to develop to a certain degree, then separation increases it unlimitedly. Then when the meeting comes, it is so wonderful. It's like the most wonderful thing after being apart. And that is the mood of, of devotion, and that is the mood Lord Chaitanya taught as for us to practice in our loving mood to Krishna, in the mood of separation. So the Lord left, and Gadadhar painted. Sarma Bhama Bhattacharya, picked up Gadadhar and said, the Lord loves you, be peaceful, he will be back. Now Lord went traveling, he went to Kanai Natashal, which is called the Vrindavan of, of, the, of, West, of Bengal. After Kanai Natashal, he went to Ramakali, and there was Rupa and Sanatan Goswami, and he met them. Little Jiva Goswami was only seven years old at the time, he was also there. And... Uh, the Lord exchanged much talks with them, and then the Lord was on his way to Vrindavan. So he was about to go, but Sanatana Goswami said something to the Lord as the Lord was about to leave. He said, my dear Lord, it's not a good time for travel. Postpone your trip to Vrindavan, go another time. Lord Chaitanya listened, but he didn't follow. He decided to continue on. And then after some time, he traveled for a little ways, and he, said, and he, and he stopped and he said, Sanatana is right. It's not the time. He turned around, went back, went again to Kanai Natashal and Veni, and then again he arrived very quickly back into Jagannath Puri. The devotees were so happy. Gadadhar Pandit was in ecstasy seeing the Lord. And then the devotees said to the Lord, How is it? You were planning to go to Vrindavan, but you didn't go. What happened? Gadara, Lord Chaitanya said something really important. He said, Krishna did not allow me to go because I hurt the heart of Gadadhar Pandit. Therefore, he did not allow me to go. Because I caused distress to Gadadhar Pandit, he didn't allow me to go. Very instructive pastime. No one should cause any discomfort to anyone because you never know what, how that will play itself out in a negative way. And so the Lord is back. And of course, Lord Chaitanya would like to visit Gadadhar Pandit. And Gadadhar Pandit was expert at Bhagavatam. He loved Bhagavatam. He had his own copy of Bhagavatam and he would read Bhagavatam as much as he could. When he was not worshipping the deity, he was reading Bhagavatam. And Lord Chaitanya would come and he would sit, and Gadadhar Pandit would read. And Lord Chaitanya said, read the pastimes of Palad Maharaj, read the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj. Two five-year-old boys, that's what Lord Chaitanya's favorite Bhagavatam pastimes were. So Gadadhar Pandit would sit there and he would read. 
and he would read the whole poem. Lord Chaitanya would sit very quietly listening. And then after he would finish the reading of that pastime, the Lord would say, read it again. <laughs> and so Gadot Hardpartner would read it again. He would finish it and he said, read it again. And Vrindavan Das Thakur, who describes this in Chaitanya Bhagavad, says, Lord Chaitanya would listen to these pastimes up to a hundred times. He would just love, because Gadat Harpanit was, so, you can't describe how sweet he was. If you think of sugar, that's bitter compared to him. <laughs> he is so sweet. <laughs> and when you meet a sweet guy, they're rare, but <laughs> you just can't get away. <laughs> Even other guys like sweet guys. <laughs> So he was so sweet, so gentle, so humble, unpretentious, so lovable. Just seeing him, you feel to fall in love with him. He was the head nature. And so one time, Lord Nityananda appeared, and he had gotten some very, very special basmati rice, the best you could possibly find. And he said, Gadadhar, I brought this rice here. Cook it for Gopinath. Gadadhar was very happy to receive the rice. He prepared the kitchen, started to cook. He cooked this wonderful offering, offered it at Gopinath. And as soon as the offering came off, guess who came? Lord Chaitanya. He said, oh, Gadadhar, you have cooked this very nice rice and Gopinath is so happy to eat it. And it was brought by Lord Nityananda and I am here to taste it. <laughs> so the three of them sat down and they had a wonderful feast of rice. <laughs> With ghee, of course. <laughs> and vegetables, that's right. He also added some vegetables in there because he took some of the vegetables from the garden and added that. So that was a wonderful pastime, very sweet. And how they would just enjoy taking prasadam together, being together. Before I tell the final pastime, I'll go back to that other pastime that I wanted to tell earlier. This was Lord when Gadadhar Pandit was in Navadweep. Lord Chaitanya started to say, Father, Father, oh Father, Father. And he was calling out. Oh, Pundarik, my father, Pundarik, my father. And the devotees were thinking, who's Pundarik? Oh, the Lord said, well, he's, he will come very soon. He's a very special personality. Mukunda, take a dartha to meet Pundarik. Now, Pundarik Vidyaniti, his actual name, he was an incarnation of Vishabhanu, of Vishabhanu the father of Radharani and Krishna's Leelas. So he appeared as Pundarik Vijaniti in Lord Chaitanya's pastime. Now when he came, he didn't look like a devotee. He had all nice, gorgeous, expensive clothes. He would wear makeup, chew red betel nut, slick his hair down with all kinds of fragrant oils, and he would carry a mirror and look at himself in the mirror. <laughs> and smile. <laughs> yeah, really, this is what he would do. And he had a nice place in Navadweep, and he had servants, nice bedstead, beautiful curtains. The room was so nicely decorated with all the luxuries. And he was, you know, acting like a rich materialist. <laughs> and so when Gadadhar Pandit saw, because Mukunda brought him, thinking, Lord Chaitanya said he's a great devotee. He doesn't look like one. <laughs> he looks like a gross materialist. So while he was thinking that, Mukunda could understand the mind of Gadadhar Pandit. So he chanted one verse from the from Srimad Bhagavatam. Oho bakiyam kalakstalakutam. Like, that's the only line I remember. <laughs> it's the first line. But it's Vidura describing, or Maitreya and Vidura talking about the glories of Krishna and how he showed special mercy to Putana. 
Putana, a wicked witch, smeared breast, uh, poison on her breast and came to kill Krishna. That was her only intention, to kill Krishna. Krishna accepted her as his mother, accepted her breast milk along with the poison, killed her and gave her the position of a nurse in the spiritual world. When Pundarik Vidyanidhi heard that verse chanted by Mukunda, he went into ecstasy and he started to go mad. He was rolling on the ground. He was crying out, Oh Krishna, oh Krishna, oh Krishna. And he was just in a wild ecstasy. He started to throw everything in the room around and break the mirror and tear his clothes, roll on the floor. The servants were coming to hold him down. They would go flying in different directions. And he was just going mad, tearing the whole place up. Gadadhar's watching this and thinking, oh my God, what an offense I committed. <laughs> and this went on for six hours straight. He didn't stop his ecstasy. Finally, after six hours, he came out of the ecstasy. And then he realized what happened. He got a little embarrassed. <laughs> sat quietly, because in that ecstasy, <laughs> he didn't know what was happening. And so Gadadhar, thinking, oh my God, what have I done? I've committed an offense in my mind. I, I doubted Lord Chaitanya, and I saw this person as a materialist. He actually is a great devotee of the Lord. So he told that to Mukunda. Mukunda said, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> he said, Mukunda, then Gadadhar said, well, actually, I want to take initiation from him. So Mukunda was happy to hear that, and he communicated that to, to uh, you know, Pundarik Vidyaniti. Pundarik said, oh, it is a great fortune, a rare fortune, to have such a disciple as Gadadhar Pandit. He was so happy. <laughs> now, what's happening is father and daughter are being reunited as guru and disciple, because Radharani is the daughter of Rishabhadu. Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrindavane Suri, Vrishabhadu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye. Yeah. So that's Radharani's father. So now the two have been united. You know, I was just thinking, this is a little mundane, but I'll tell it anyway. And you know, we when we appear in the world, mundane, you know what mundane is, means ordinary. When we appear in the world, um, sometimes we meet people that we know from previous lives, and that's true. Sometimes we become the husband and wife, sometimes we become friends, sometimes we become enemies. <laughs> if your enemy in your last life may also come as your husband in this life, <laughs> or your wife, <laughs> or your sister, or your brother. <laughs> if you ever have family troubles, you might start wondering why. <laughs> so that happens, because previous karma has put us together again in a next lifetime, and we pick up with the same personalities. But sometimes, but we can't really tell. Sometimes it looks like that, sometimes it is that, sometimes it's not that, but it does happen, it happens a lot. People are sometimes really can understand, I've been together with this person before, like that. Or last in life he punched me in the nose, and this life I'm going to punch him. <laughs> so, <laughs> something like that. Well, you know, so that's how karma works, because if you don't fulfill your karmic your karmic collection in one life, you have to come back and finish it up the next life. So, and if you don't do it that life, good luck, you know, <laughs> it keeps going. But this is a very sweet relationship that really manifested between Pundarik Vidyanidhi and Gadadhar Pandit. So that was pastime. And then, of course, when Lord Chaitanya heard, he was so happy that Gadadhar Pandit had taken initiation from Pundarik Vidyanidhi, because he was such a great personality. But no one could understand him because he looked like a gross materialist. You can't judge a devotee by his outward appearance. That's not the way to judge. Sometimes a devotee has an infirm body with some disease. 
or some there's some material deficiency in that devotee or something but that could be a great devotee you can't really tell so to judge according to what you see externally is not the way to understand like that the only way you understand a devotee is by two things by their words and by their actions specifically by their actions and you can understand Now back to Jagannath Puri. Now, there was one time where Srinivas Acharya, he came to meet Gadadhar Pandit, knowing that Gadadhar Pandit was expert in teaching Bhagavatam. So he wanted to learn Bhagavatam from Gadadhar Pandit. Well, this, well, wait a minute, this pastime is after Lord Chaitanya left. Okay, so we'll go back. Sorry. <laughs> so one time there was a great kirtan in the Tota Gopinath temple. And the devotees were chanting and dancing and chanting and dancing and chanting and dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing 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 rolling on the ground, rolling on the ground, rolling on the ground, chanting, chanting, dancing, dancing, dancing. And so everybody lost consciousness. They didn't know where they were. They were just in ecstasy. I didn't even get close to the ecstasy that they were experiencing. And uh, so everybody was just so absorbed in the kirtan. And Lord Chaitanya was there. But then after some time, about three hours later in the kirtan, everyone looked around. Mahaprabhu's gone. Where is he? He's not here. They all looked around, couldn't find him anywhere. They looked in the deity room, they looked outside, they looked on the, in, the, in the gardens, they went all around. Mahaprabhu is gone. Oh, no. And then everyone at the same time, they all understood what happened. He left the world. And then there was a great sadness. There's a picture. You can see that picture in the Tota Gopinath temple when the devotees saw that they were like, it was like too much. Everybody was ro crying. It's just like a pitiable scene. But what happened? Lord Chaitanya disappeared. He went into the deity room, and he went. He he merged himself right into the deity of Gopinath. And if you go there today, there's a mark on the right leg of the deity. It looks like a little cut, but it's actually a mark. The pajari say this is where Lord Chaitanya entered into the deity. You see? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so the Lord disappeared by going. Just to, he showed his love for Gadadhar Pandit by entering into the deity that worship, was worshipped by Gadadhar Pandit. This is a very important part of that leela. He wanted to make that message because there's two kinds of worship in Gor Leela. There is Gor Nitai Sakyaras, and there's Gor. Gadadhar and Madhuryaras. So Lord Chaitanya and Lord and Gadadhar Pandit were in Madhuryaras, which was, you know, the highest of all rasas, the amorous ras of Lord pastimes. So Lord Chaitanya had that mood. Nitai Gor, Vrajendra Nandanaye, Sachi Sutta Hoilo Se, Balaram Hoilo Nitai. Nitai Gor. Krishna, Balaram, there's no difference. They appear to perform the Sankirtan movement. But Lord Chaitanya had a special, intimate relationship with Gadadhar in the mood of the gopis. But that's not so much spoken about because that's not, not our mood of worship. We worship the Lord mostly in Gornatai. But if you go to Navadvip and you go to the, um, what is it called? The uh, yoga peat, the yoga peat, where Lord, you know, Lord Chaitanya appeared in the yoga peat. In the back, there's, there's a small temple, and it has three altars. And one of the altars is Gorgadadhar. I wanted to bring the picture of that de those deities. I have it in my room, but I forgot it. It's, it's Lord Chaitanya and Gadadhar together like this. They both have their arms raised, like one arm raised like that. That's a very, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur used to worship 
Gaur Gadadhar. That was his worshipful deities because Bhakti Vinoda Kaur is an intimate associate of Srimati Radharani in the spiritual world. And he worshipped the Lord in the Madhurya Ras. So in his in his worship in this world, he was worshipping Gaur Gadadhar. And he writes about that in many of his songs also. Oh, that's very sweet. So now when Lord Chaitanya left, Gadadhar Pandit was besides himself with anguish. He wanted to leave the world too, but he didn't because when Srinivasacharya came to learn uh, Srimad Bhagavatam from him, he stayed to, t to teach Srinivasacharya about Bhagavatam. But what happened was, Gadadhar Pandit, when he would read his Bhagavatam every day, he would cry. And because he was crying, the tears would go all over the Bhagavatam. And the ink, it's not like it's it's not like typed, it's regular ink, it would smudge the words and he couldn't read it. So he gave his Bhagavatam to Srinivas and said, take it back to the scribes in Navadweep and have them recopy, bring it back and I'll teach you. So when Srinivasacharya left, Gadadhar Pandit was waiting for him to return, but at the same time he was feeling so miserable that Lord Chaitanya left. And it says he was aging one year every day. He was, his body was becoming so old in ecstasy of separation that at one point, because every day he would dress the deity of, of Gadadhar, and, I'm sorry, uh, Gopinath, and Gopinath is big. Gopinath is a big deity. So when he was trying to put the helmet, the crown, on Gopinath, he couldn't. He used to be able to do it easy, but his body had become so old in separation that when he was trying to lift it up, he couldn't lift it. So what happened? Gopinath sat down. The deity sat down. So you go today and you can see the deity. He's in a, he's in a sitting position playing a flute. <laughs> Very rare posture. The only one in existence. Gopinath sitting down playing the flute. And then Gadadhar Pandit, after some time, he couldn't bear the separation. He, he, he tried to wait, but 11 months after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya and Gadadhar Pandit left the planet in 1535 A.D., which was 11 months after Lord Chaitanya left the planet. So, so this was a beautiful leela of the Lord appearing in this world along with his internal energy to perform the path times of spreading the Sankirtan movement. So, Lord, this this uh, this leela of Lord Chaitanya is going on today. Lord Chaitanya is still here. He's there in the form of his deity. And he's come to perform his pastimes. What is his pastime? To make the world Krishna consciousness by spreading the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra to every town and village. That is his desire, that this Krishna consciousness spreads to every town and every village of the world. And this is the only thing, and I say this with complete conviction, this is the only thing that will save this world. This world is in a miserable position. The only thing is the holy name. There's nothing else. People have no other recourse. Material life, you can't, they, they can't go back to material life. They can't just it, justify it or adjust it to make it work. The only thing that'll work is people have to become Krishna conscious. That's why we have a great responsibility tremendous responsibility. We are the legacy of Lord Chaitanya's movement and therefore we are we have the duty to spread this movement. It is our rightful duty, it's been given to us as our legacy. The benefit of becoming Krishna consciousness is great, but that benefit must be shared with others. And that is our duty to try to share it as best we can and the Sankirtan movement is the way to do it. Every town and village have Harinam Sankirtan, hold classes on Krishna consciousness, invite people to come and distribute prasadam. That is our movement, these three things. Kirtan, discussion on philosophy and prasadam distribution. These, these things are very attractive. They'll always remain attractive. 
the enthusiasm of the devotees makes everything more and more dry. The more enthusiastic we are to do this, the more people will come running to us, wanting to wanting more and more of what we have. It's very attractive. And that's Lord Chaitanya's desire that his movement spread to every town and village. Okay, so we are very fortunate to have the opportunity to be here in Slovenia and have to worship not only Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Gadadhar, and, but the whole Panchatattva is here. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhaktivin. Instead of getting one, you get five. <laughs> And this is special, special mercy. Those who worship Gaur, those who worship Nitai Gaur, or Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, are getting special mercy. But those who have Panchatattva, that is special, special mercy. Cannot be described. There's only about four or five temples in the world that have the worship of Panchatattva. It's not a thing that is very common, but it indicates a lot of mercy, a lot of mercy. So take the mercy and run with it <laughs> and distribute it as much as you can to others and live it. Live it as much as you can by chanting, dancing, and reading Prabhupada's books. And, and any time you get a chance, tell people about Krishna. The ideal in the way we practice Krishna consciousness, that is also a form of preaching. Prabhupada said the behavior of the devotee attracts people also. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is a little bit about Gadadhar Pandit, whose appearance day is today. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Anyone would like to? Speak something or ask a question? Yes, Bhagavad Dharma Prabhu. Uh, it, it, that, um, the worship of Gornitai is in Sakiras and uh, Gurgadadar in uh, Madhuryaras. Um, and on the other hand, we know that um, Narutan Das Thakur said that without the mercy of Nitai, Nityananda, no one can get the mercy of Radha and Krishna. How can we understand that? The way it is. <laughs> Just as he said it. But we don't worship Lord Chaitanya in, in that mood of Gorgadadhar. That's really elevated, that's spontaneous devotional service. That's for those who are on that platform. That's why it's not, you, you don't see deities of Gorgadadhar in our movement anywhere. Because we're not we're not in that mood of worship. We worship the Lord in 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 the mood of spreading the Sankirtan movement. Bodo suke kabugai, bodo suke kabusuda bikundeche, namera kureche, koda nitai, koda nitai. Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda is going everywhere, and he's petitioning everyone. Please take up the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Please worship Lord Chaitanya. Uh, what is that? Very, what is that? Baja go, Baja go, Ranga, Kaho go, Ranga, Laho go, Ranga, Naham Re, Ye Janai go, Ranga, Baja, Tevara, Naham Re, Baja go, Ranga, Kaha go, Ranga. Laha Gauranga Nahamre Ye Janai Gauranga Bade Sehi Marapare Yeah, so we are worshipping, yeah, that, so Lord Nityananda was singing that, wow, worship Gauranga, make Gauranga your life. And three things, worship Gauranga, Chant the names of Goranga. Goranga is your, your life, here's your soul, everything. Goranga is the treasure of your heart. That's Goranga. So, yeah, that's our mood of worship. So what, what Naratam Das Thakur is saying is absolutely, perfectly correct. 
But we know there's another Leela to Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, and that is Gorgadhar. But we don't worship the Lord in, in that mood. <laughs> Now, I don't know if that smile of yours is a yes or a no. <laughs> so you have to explain. <laughs> it's okay? All right, just if you disagree, then that's good. <laughs> just let me know. <laughs> no, if you, if you, that, that's actually the understanding. Gorgadhar worship is not meant, and that's not part of our, you know, worship anywhere in our movement. The only one we know is Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He set up Gorgada Hardidis in different places, but the main ones is in the yoga pit. Like that. Very intimate worship. Yes, sir, please give us your opinion. <laughs> Question. Where's the microphone runner? We have a runner. He's supposed to be fast. Come on, run. There you go. Fast. Okay. The, 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 the microphone runner is the fastest guy in the temple. Um, when Kadadaros asked, what is his opinion? What is the liberation? And then uh, he was told to go back, read books, and come back. Do you know what he said? Well, Lord Chaitanya was teasing him. Okay. <laughs> He would tease Gadadhar all the time, as Krishna would tease Radharani. <laughs> yeah, he was teasing him. Lord Gadadhar was right. What he said was right, but Lord Chaitanya just decided to give another explanation. <laughs> that, was, that was his mood. Whatever you would say, he would say something different, <laughs> no matter if it was right or not. <laughs> It's a scholar. A scholar never agrees with you. You ever try to talk to a scholar? You can't get anywhere, you know. <laughs> you don't agree on anything. <laughs> the only thing you agree on is that the fact you both disagree. <laughs> that's the only thing you can agree on is disagreeing. And that's the way it is. An intelligent person will not agree with you on anything. And he'll keep giving you different reasons why Whatever he says is right. <laughs> Even if you, you may agree with him, and then he'll say, well, yeah, but there's more to it than that. <laughs> those who know, those who are intelligent, who know language, can speak anything and make it sound interesting. <laughs> I say it's supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Wow. Did you get that word? Supercalifragilistic espialidocious. Write that down. It's the longest word in the English language, but it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you see, see a Prabhupada when he does that too. He just makes up words and then he laughs. He said, this is what the scientists do. They just come up with a bunch of words. And then, oh wow, I can't understand it. It must be important. <laughs> If I can't understand it, that means it's it's great. <laughs> so Prabhupada would imitate the scientists with all their word jugglery. <laughs> they speak things that nobody can understand. Oh wow, that's really good. It must be important because I can't understand it. <laughs> and there are people are like that. <laughs> I just think, you know. So yeah, there's people who are expert at disagreeing. <laughs> no matter what you say, they'll disagree. <laughs> because in the material world, nothing is absolute. So even if you say something that sounds right, there's another side to it. <laughs> so in the material world, you can't come up with any you know, absolute principle because everything's relative anyway. <laughs> So, therefore, anybody can make up any philosophy and it sounds good. <laughs> That's why spiritual philosophy is the only thing that makes sense. Material philosophy is always changeable. What's, what works one day doesn't work another day.
and vice versa. Because everything is relative. Just like somebody say, wow, look at that girl. She's so beautiful. And the other guy would say, what do you see in her? She's ugly. <laughs> and he said, no, she's beautiful. No, you're looking at it wrong. You're looking on the wrong side. Turn her around on the other side. Yeah, that's right. You got it. <laughs> so, you know, it's just everything is relative. Two people are in love and they're both ugly. And you, another person says, what are they seeing each other? But... They see something you can't see. <laughs> this is the material world. This place makes no sense. <laughs> it's completely nonsense. <laughs> Don't try to make any sense out of it. Just chant Hare Krishna. And then it'll make sense. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, this is, I'm just giving you the complete understanding of something that you can never understand. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Now this is the material world. <laughs> when Prabhupada, tell, Prabhupada was talking about himself, he was, he just, one time he just opened up his, he had a devotee there who was massaging him and he was quiet, Prabhupada said, when I was with Krishna, Krishna turned to me and said, go to the material world and preach. And I said to Krishna, material world? Horrible place, horrible. And Krishna said to me, no, you go, you write some books, and I'll protect you. <laughs> so I came. <laughs> In other words, Prabhupada didn't want to come, <laughs> but Krishna kind of forced him, because he knew he could do the job. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, the only thing good about the material world is, you know, is taking prasadam. <laughs> <laughs> And a lot of devotees agree with that, too, so we don't have any problem with that one. <laughs> you can't go wrong there. That's, that's the, when you discuss philosophy, you don't know what, where it's going to end up. <laughs> this, is, this is material wealth. So this is a little bit about Gadadhar Pandit, very interesting personality. We're fortunate to have his personal association the deity is non-different than the person, and the person exhibits the mood of compassion, as same as that. There's another story where Vallabhacharya, he was a famous acharya, he started the Pushti Mark, Sampradaya. He was a great scholar, he was present at the time of Lord Chaitanya. And so he would go to Lord Chaitanya and he would come up with philosophical things that he wanted to mention to Lord Chaitanya. So one time he said to Lord Chaitanya, I have made a commentary that is better than the commentary of Sridhar Swami on Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Chaitanya didn't like that at all. He said, anyone who does not accept the Swami is a prostitute. <laughs> so what did he mean by that? Another word for Swami is husband. So Swami means husband. That's also the name. So if a wife doesn't accept a husband, she's a prostitute. So he called him a prostitute. So Balabhacharya, he went away. He came back another time. Because he was, he was intelligent, but he was proud. And Lord Chaitanya could see his pride. So he said to him, time he said to Lord Chaitanya, I have compiled a list of names of Krishna. Can I read it to you? Lord Chaitanya said, I only know two names, Shama Sundar and Yasomati Nandana. That's all I know. <laughs> I didn't want to hear anything else. And then the devotees were chanting Hare Krishna. So Valbachari, he was thinking, why? 
a wife, we are the wife of Krishna, and we, why is a wife calling out the name of her husband? Because if a wife speaks the name of her husband, she's considered to be impure. A wife will never speak the name of her husband. She calls her husband Prabhu. And the wife calls, and the husband calls his wife Devi. So that's how they relate to each other, Devi and Prabhu. She never speaks her husband's name. So Balabhacharya said, Lord Chaitanya, why are we, the wives of Krishna, speaking his name? And Lord Chaitanya said, well, if the husband tells the wife to chant his name, she must obey. <laughs> and then he walked away. <laughs> so everything the Lord Chaitanya, everything Balabhacharya said, you know, Lord Chaitanya would defeat him. <laughs> and he couldn't get anywhere. So then he would try to go with the devotees of Lord Chaitanya, and they would stay away from Vallabhacharya because they knew Lord Chaitanya's mood. But then he went to Gadadhar, and he saw Gadadhar, and he came with his Bhagavatam and sat next to Gadadhar and started reading. Now, Gadadhar Pandit is very mild, very soft, very gentle. And now he's reading Bhagavatam to Gadadhar Pandit, and Gadadhar Pandit's thinking, you know, he's such an exalted person, I can't leave. But if, the, if Lord Chaitanya finds out I'm listening to him, he will be angry with me. <laughs> so he didn't know what to do. So he started to pray in his mind to Lord Chaitanya, I don't want to offend him by leaving, but it, I don't want to listen to him either. <laughs> so, so please save me. And then, you know, because... Balabhacharya found someone who would listen to him, but he kind of forced it because Gadadhar Pandit, he was such a gentle person that you know he wouldn't want to make anybody feel bad by going away. So he stood there to listen. And then Sarup Dhamadhar came later, and uh, Gadadhar Pandit said, "Well, you know," he told he told him the whole thing. Sarup Dhamadhar said. Lord Chaitanya is not happy with you. <laughs> but then Lord Chaitanya forgave him because he knew his, his, his mood was not to do anything to make anybody feel unhappy or awkward. That was his mood. You know? So Lord Chaitanya forgave him. And so. so you get a little insight on his nature. Very sweet, very gentle, very loving Okay, so, yeah, so are we done for the evening? Yes? There's two more questions from the audience, Maharaj. Okay. So, one is, in the sixth verse of Shikshashtaka, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is praying for ecstatic symptoms. Should we also pray to have such ecstatic symptoms? If you repeat those verses, yeah. <laughs> That's the idea, we repeat those verses. Ayinanda, no, the next one. Nayanam gladara sudaraya, vaddanam gadgara rudaya gira, pulakayar nichitam vapukada, tavanama grahame bhavishyati. When will my eyes be decorated with tears of love flowing constantly? When I chant your holy name, when will my voice choke up? When will the hairs of my body stand on ecstasy when I chanting your holy name? This particular verse is in the mood of bhava. It's on the platform of Bhava. It's one stage before Prema. So it's a very exalted stage of Bhakti. But to pray like that is fine, but don't try to imitate it by trying to cry. <laughs> you can't imitate crying. There's a, there's a class of spiritualists. When they come out in public, they, they eat a lot of chilies, and it burns their eyes, and they start crying in public, and they make everyone think, oh, the ecstasy. <laughs> yeah, they, we call them chili babas. <laughs> this is <laughs> chili babas. You know, they, they make a demonstration of being ecstatic, roll on the ground, and they cry. They can't cry, you know, really. So they, if they take enough chilies, then they'll start crying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's chill, you know what chilies are like. It's like, ooh, you're on fire. <laughs> 
So yeah, they, they make a demonstration. So this verse cannot be imitated, but we recite it every day, along with the last two verses, which are even higher. Those two verses are Pralambabhav and Sambhog. You know, those two are the highest. So we, we read those verses, and we also try to understand the meaning of those verses, but you, we can't per imitate the mood of those verses. Imitation doesn't work in Krishna consciousness. You either, you're either there or you're not. <laughs> it, has, it happens automatically. It's not something you can imitate. But you can act in such a way as to bring about the proper mood of devotion. In other words, you can practice the qualities of a devotee, but you can't imitate the ecstasies that are there for those who are on a higher platform. <laughs> so chanting those verses is fine. Yeah, That's what we do. There's one more question, Maharaj. So, mm -hmm. How is the worship of Gora Gadadar in the mood of Madhurya, not Gora Nagari? How is the worship of Gorgadadhar in the mood of Madhurya? And not Gora Nagari. Gor Nagari, what does that exactly mean? Nagari. Nagari means place, I think. What is the actual translation of the word Nagari? That's Anybody what's... know? Anybody got your let me see if it's you have the you have something you can look it up, Nagari? Anybody got, can get, can reference the word Nagari? N A Nagari usually means place or village or something. And town. Yeah, it means town. Nagari means town. So what is the what is that last line again? Now he said Goranga Nagari. Just, just said Goranga, not Gora, but Goranga Nagari. Same thing, but just yeah. said Goranga. Yeah, it means the town of Goranga. Yeah, it's uh, go. Oh, if you say, huh? oh yeah, but Goranga Nagaris are not bona fide. They're one of the upper sampradayas. They're not bona fide devotees. They follow the. They imitate the different symptoms of ecstasy of gore, but they're not bona fide. They're sahajis. <clears throat> so we don't acknowledge them as being bona fide. And that's Prabhupada's statement also. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. She got out her pundit key. She got a Prabhupada key. Gore Primanande.